Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. In this tutorial, we will walk you through the process of creating a 3D dice model and how to add a couple of basic materials. I'll be using Blender 3.4, so let's get started. I'll adjust the resolution of the screen first. This step is optional, however, you might find it useful. Come up to the Edit menu. Under Preferences, go to the Interface tab. And in the Display section, we can boost the value of the resolution scale to 1.20. Then hit enter on the keyboard. Once you've made your changes, click on Save Preferences. Or if you have Auto Save Preferences activated, then you're good to go. Click on the X on the top right corner of the panel to close it. And Blender will save the changes and apply them to the interface. I have enabled the screencast keys. From here, you are able to view the mouse movements and the shortcut keys used in real time. We're going to start with the default cube, so left click to select it. I'll zoom in and out by rolling the middle mouse wheel. And I'll orbit around by pressing and holding the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. First, we'll bring the cube up to the ground level. So open the side panel. On the top right corner, there is a very small icon. Left click on it to open the sidebar. Or you can press N on the keyboard to quickly toggle on and off the sidebar. Open the item tab if it's not open. This panel holds all the transform settings for the active object. If we look under the object dimensions, you'll find the height, width and the length. The cube is situated in the center of the grid. So if we move it up by one meter, it will be on top of the grid. Okay, so come up to location. Here are the X, Y and Z axis values. We'll insert a value of one in the Z axis, then hit enter. And this will position the cube directly at the ground level. You can press N again on the keyboard to close the sidebar. I have a small black and white dice here in front of me. It's just a small square object with slightly rounded corners and rounded edges. So let's see how we can achieve this in Blender. First we can add a bevel modifier. So come over to the modifier panel and select bevel. And in the amount value, let's set it to 0.2. And in segments, let's use 4. Now we can switch to edit mode. Come up to the object mode selector situated at the top left corner of the 3D viewport or hit the tab key on the keyboard. We need to add some more geometry to create the holes. So let's use the loop cut tool to cut the mesh. You can find the loop cut tool in the edge menu above the 3D viewport. However, I'm just going to use the shortcut keys, Control R, Hover the cursor over the edge you want to cut. A yellow line appears. Don't click your mouse yet. Just slowly roll the middle mouse wheel and add more loop cuts. You can see the number of cuts at the bottom left corner of the screen. We want four loop cuts. Then left click to confirm the number of loops and right click to position the loops in the center. Drop down and open the settings panel. From here, you can also change the amount of cuts. We need to add more loop cuts to the other side and also to the center of the mesh. So let's repeat the last steps. A little bit around. Okay, that looks good. Everything's done. Now we can apply the bevel modifier. However, we need to switch back to object mode first. So come up to the mode selector and switch to object mode. Come over to the bevel modifier and click on the small arrow. And from the menu, select apply. Or you could hit Control A on the keyboard. Before we move on, we can add a subdivision surface modifier. And in the Levels viewport and in Render, set the value to 3. With the object selected, right-click 
and from the context menu select Shade Smooth. Next, switch back to Edit Mode. And this time we're going to switch to Face Mode. The Vertex Edge and Face Selection buttons are situated next to the Edit Mode selector. You can use the shortcut keys if you like. It's 1, 2 and 3 from the top row of numbers on your keyboard. That's perfect. We have the exact amount of faces we need to create the pips, or the small dots, which are commonly referred to as the holes on the dice. The holes are arranged in a specific pattern. On a standard six-sided dice, the numbers on opposite sides always add up to seven. For example, the opposite sides of a dice will have one and six, two and five, and three and four. We're going to use the navigation widget to change the viewports. It's situated on the top right corner of the 3D viewport. Let's start in the front orthographic viewport. Come over to the gizmo and click on the handle on the right side until you see the X axis. Then you will be in the front orthographic view. You can see the name of the viewport on the top left corner of the 3D viewport. Select the faces in the same position as you see in the video. We'll only be using the center faces. On this side we'll select two faces. Select the first face, press and hold the shift key while you select the other face. It's important to note that you have to keep the shift key pressed while you're selecting all the faces. Also, if you click the mouse in the viewport, you would deselect the faces. If this happens, just hit Ctrl Z to undo the last operation. Come back up to the navigation widget and hit the handle on the right side to change viewports. Press and hold the shift key again and this time select three faces. Back up to the navigation widget and change the viewport. Press and hold the shift key and this time select five faces. Back up to the navigation widget and change the viewport again. Press and hold the shift key and this time we'll select four faces. Okay, slow down. This time we're going to change to the top viewport. So hit the top Z axis button. Press and hold the shift key and select six faces this time. Come back over to the navigation widget and we will change handles again. This time we're going to hit the bottom handle. Press once, then one more time to switch to the bottom orthographic view. Press and hold the shift key and select the center face. Come back over to the navigation widget and press the top handle once more to come back to the front orthographic view. I'll orbit around by pressing the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. Check to see if we still have all the faces selected. Let's create the holes. There are a few methods we could use to do this and each one would work great. First, we will use the inset tool. This will create an inset to the selected faces. Think of it as adding an edge loop. You will see the values on the top left side of the viewport. You can adjust the thickness by moving your mouse. Hit the I key on the keyboard to create an inset. Then hit the I key once more to switch to individual faces, then left click to confirm and this will inset faces on each face individually. Come down to the inset settings panel and change the thickness to a value of 0.03, then hit enter on the keyboard. Now we can use the extrude tool to push all the selected faces into the mesh at the same time. Ok, back to the keyboard. Press Alt and the letter E on the keyboard and this will bring up the Extrude Tool options and choose Extrude Faces along Normals. This will extrude the faces to whichever direction they are facing. We want the faces all to be pointing towards the center. Now when you move your mouse, you'll be able to push the faces inside and outside of the mesh. We don't need a deep hole, so just move inwards slightly and we can adjust the value in the Settings panel to something like negative or minus 0 0.03. This works well. Now we're going to add just a little bit more detail to this hole. But before we can do this, come over to the Modify tab and enable On Cage. It's the small triangular shape button. 
Now to define the hole, we can add one more small inset. Hit I on the keyboard, move the mouse and create a small inset. In thickness, you can add a value of 0 0.15. For the next step, we're going to push the faces inwards. And to do this, we're going to use the Transform Orientation tool. So come up to the main bar and select Transform Orientation and switch to Normal. Then change the pivot point to Individual Origins. Press G on the keyboard to move the object and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. Now move the mouse and push all the faces slightly towards the center. Notice that blue lines appear, showing the direction of each face. Move the mouse slightly, then drop down to the settings panel. And in the Z axis, you can enter a negative 0 0.037 if you like. Let's select all the interior faces. Come up to the Select menu and go to Select More or Less and choose More. We need to repeat this for the next row. However, use the shortcut keys, Control and the Numpad plus sign. Now we have all the faces selected, we can add a material. But just before we do this, come up to the Shading Mode buttons and switch to Wireframe. I'll orbit around a minute. That looks good. All the faces have extruded inwards to the center of the mesh correctly. Come back up to the Shading Mode buttons and switch to the Material Preview Mode. The Material Preview Mode is the second last button on the top right. The Material Preview Mode in Blender is designed specifically for viewing materials and textures. You can also choose different lighting setups, however for this video we'll leave the default settings. Make sure you still have all the interior faces selected and we're going to create a material, just a basic material. Come over to the Material tab, double click on Material and we can change the name. I'll just type in the word Black. Press the Assign button to assign the material to the selected faces. Scroll down and click on the base color. Now from the color picker you can choose any color. We're going to use black for the interior holes. So just drag the slider down. We don't want a pure black so I'm just going to leave it about here. That looks fine. Let's scroll down now and go to Roughness. And in the Roughness value I'm going to change the value to 0.3. Now we can use the Invert tool. This tool will invert all the faces, so literally the faces that weren't selected will now be selected and the faces that were selected will not be selected. <laughs> Let's have a look. Come up to the Select menu and select Invert. And we can quickly apply the material then to the outside. You could also just hit the shortcut key Control i Come back over to the Material panel. Press on the small plus sign to add a new material. Press the new button, double click on the material and change the name to white. Then press the assign button to assign the material. Scroll down and click on the base color. I'll just use the default white. It's not a pure white so open up the color picker and copy the hex value. Ok, so before we move on, let's drop down to the roughness value and change the value to a 0.3. You can go back in and change the colors if you like. All you have to do is go back to the color picker and just swap the colors over. Let's orbit around just to make sure we've done this correctly. Switch back into object mode or just hit tab on the keyboard. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the object. If you follow me to the end of the video, great work. Remember to keep practicing and experimenting with different techniques and materials to continue improving your skills. We'll wrap up here. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Enjoy.